बहुत सारे लोग होते हैं जो ऐसे रैंडमली बोलते हैं दैट आई वॉन्ट टू बिल्ड समथिंग लाइक दिस वन डे यू आर वन ऑफ दोज फ्यू पीपल हु हैव एग्जीक्यूटेड योर आइडिया दैट यू गॉट दिस आइडिया यू आर जस्ट आउट साइड योर योगा क्लास ईटिंग वन बार एंड यू सेड वी कैन स्टार्ट समथिंग लाइक दैट इन इंडिया आई डोंट थिंक आई कैन डू अ जॉब एंड डू इट बैडली आई एम कंपेरेटिव आई एम नॉट समबडी हु विल बी ओके विद मीडियोक्रेटी my wardrobe has pajamas like i just have black pajamas and i have black tops i don't like to think about it at all i eat the same three meals every day how do you do it like you plan a company you're still running it you have a four year old kid yeah. and you know want to stay in touch with all of them abhi bhi health taste ke bina nahi dikhe like that is the truth of it you have to do 80% health and 20% taste what are the products or ingredients we indians consume that are not healthy primary one is um like if there was a one tip just don't pick the stuff that has vaida you avoid yeah. biscuits you avoid chocolate do one cheat meal a week you sleep on time you eat between 6 to 7 o'clock yeah you'll be okay. healthy you'll be, you'll be okay <laughs> a lot of people come back and tell me you're on a health food company you're not skinny i'm like i have never taken a pill in my life so to me that's the better indicator of health i can lift 50 kg i can do 30 push ups i won't break a sweat what's that one thing you have learned from itc um thing that i was most impressed with is बहुत सारे लोग होते हैं जो ऐसे रैंडमली बोलते हैं दैट आई वॉन्ट टू बिल्ड समथिंग लाइक दिस वन डे एंड आई वॉन्ट टू स्टार्ट दिस कंपनी और आई हैव दिस आइडिया मे बी आई हैव टाइम आई डू इट मे बी आई हैव दिस काइंड ऑफ सिचुएशन आई डू इट यू आर वन ऑफ दोज फ्यू पीपल हु हैव यू नो एग्जीक्यूटेड योर आइडिया दैट यू गॉट दिस आइडिया यू वर जस्ट आउट साइड योर योगा क्लास एंड यू वर ईटिंग वन बार एंड यू सेड वी कैन स्टार्ट समथिंग लाइक दैट इन इंडिया and you executed your idea scaled it and sold it to a bigger company and how does it feel feels normal to be very normal. honest like everybody keeps asking you me you say this feel, in all the interviews it, it feels yeah, normal i mean is it because of the process that it took you one year of, of that process mna process and it like ek jo moment aaya uske baad aisa laga ki yaar nahi i feel like everybody i mean i don't know i inherently and i'm not just saying this right i feel everybody's life is a different beautiful journey right and my journey is no more beautiful or no harsher than anybody else's i inherently believe that like you know like there are many points in your life where you look at somebody else and you think like in my apartment there'll be a couple of people who'd be like you must feel so great all yeah. the time and i'd be like yeah but you have this really and like for me the idea of happiness has always been like a really large family like hmm. having like five kids in the house and you know <laughs> having dogs and all of that and i feel everyone has this sense of balance as to how they go about their life and i feel everyone's journey everyone's circumstances everyone's experience is different so i don't feel any more special or any less than anyone else and I feel this was a natural I mean I don't know I I don't feel different in any way maybe na I don't know. Which sounds so calm here but uh, I have heard your interview with Shantanu and yeah. you were sharing all those hectic days. Yeah yeah of course. And how aggressive you were about certain things. Yeah. That your team were okay your team was okay your investors were okay but you were very aggressive and <laughs> I have to do it in yeah. a certain way and then now I'm seeing you meeting you you sound so calm. Yeah. So that is um, inherently like I don't think I can do a job and do it badly. I'm I'm competitive and I am um very clear that when you run a company and you've given people certain commitments you have to honor. Like I'm very clear like I had to return do some you know some um you know give good return to my investors they had trusted me. Um my employees I we've never had a single layoff in Yoga Bar like um I I'm not somebody who will be okay with mediocrity and that's a choice I've made for who I am and I accept it. I'm saying there's a price to be paid um for people who want to always make sure that they do their best possible job. Um inherently competitive people are also um lead stressful lives. Yeah. Um so yeah that's just a skill thing. I don't think anything I do I can do it less completely half hearted. Like day before yesterday um somebody asked me to I mean there was a badminton class going on in the morning and the pros play in the morning in the apartment and I um was playing and then they were like no maybe you should learn how to play and now I'm so competitive about it I hired a coach and I think like my pro <laughs> like I'm just inherently that person like I yeah. can't and if somebody ever tells me I can't do something I will definitely do it uh, you mentioned about your family you come from a tamram family right <laughs> yeah. and uh, you mentioned that everyone in the family is academically yeah. 
well accomplished so tell me about your early days how was life and where do you come from so uh, so it's very interesting story so my dad was one of the highest paid professionals in the country like wow. in the 1970s uh, and obviously at that point in time he was a bachelor mm-hmm. so five degrees ca cs lawyer um mba Amazing. also a sanskrit scholar oh god um, <laughs> and also a big fan of elvis uh, understood english music way ahead of his times mm-hmm. uh, also understood classical so very um i probably didn't appreciate how dynamic he was as a human being until now like uh, so yeah and um he left his job because he has three girls and he decided that he is not going to take a job that makes him transfer from one city to the other he wants to give stability and i and uh, he very uh, early on decided that education is the biggest source of freedom hmm. um so um left his job we lived in under very simple circumstances like we've never bought packaged food at home like my mother would make the gajar ka halwa or whatever right like i'm i'm not saying that we were poor i'm saying um you know uh, to go from being like the highest one of the highest paid professionals in the country to living a very very um, you know structured life like you plan your finances for the month you you do all so of that so what was he doing he started practicing as a ca okay. and as a practicing chartered accountant very difficult i know um but he also dabbled in number of businesses so he used to do um he used to supply taxis to all the five star hotels so the ola of today my dad used to do it nine this is end so of, amazing it's amazing it's amazing and then during his 80s uh, we didn't have a car at home but my dad had bought two computers because he decided he wants to do a accounting outsourcing company in the 80s and my mom uh, was made like my, he made made my mother take these courses in computers so that she can also kind of like help him also do this business with each other this but he was too so early like all of his uh, ideas were very we're talking about 40 years back you know and then he started doing like a fashion business and um so i i think he was inherently a very creative mind and but what also what was his background like his father this. i mean uh, my grandfather was a doctor but like my father was uh, you know like a he's a finance person ca cs icw whatever but he also comes from a family where they studied under the street light would not have like food for several days of the week mm. one glass of milk a day was his entire meal and all of that so um yeah and i think i think my dad's influence on our lives is very very strong yeah. i do think that as i grow old i become more and more like him yeah. so um extreme sense of discipline you really limit your needs like i don't buy, i don't buy or use anything that i don't need i will limit the number of things that i would you own. still do that you i still, still do that. that i still absolutely do that i have the same car for the last 15 years i don't know how to drive so i need a car yeah. so i have a very basic car i have it for 15 years i don't buy a house i don't have a fancy house i have like basic things yeah. uh, until my clothes really wear and tear i yeah. don't really replace them i've never bought a piece of gold um so it is just who uh, i mean and i think all of that is really cultural like i think it's it's just the kind of discipline that my things dad have learned from things you've learned yeah uh, also so don't feel the need to really waste you know like i don't have the need to waste and i'm not i don't feel like things should impress people like i i get <laughs> a lot of people make a lot of fun of me for mm-hmm. that for that habit but i i don't believe that um i would want to be any different no i think uh, this is the ideal case we should all do that because remember growing up we used to have only two three products in our washroom we exactly. have toothpaste yeah. shampoo two three soaps yeah. it's like now our washrooms are full oh, yeah. of yeah. products yeah. we have all kind of serums hair masks yeah. face masks what not yeah. and now there will be a time when all these influencers will start telling you that let, let's live minimal yeah there will yeah. be a time because yeah. now like i just don't understand what do you think like are because you uh, you founded a consumer brand so i'm asking this um, do you think our needs have increased yeah. or we are over yeah so, i'm <laughs> um i actually cannot for the life of me imagine why people spend so much i'll be very on mm-hmm. i spend on food i like good food like healthy like really yeah. like i would buy organic vegetables i need to know where my food is coming from and yeah. i've always been that way um i've never owned cosmetics like i like i might have one or two gifts that somebody's given me i've never purchased uh personal care products right like i'm exactly like that you'll have the same 
the soap and the yeah. the the toothpaste and then a shampoo and then once it gets over you buy the next and then you buy the next yes. right um i don't i mean but i guess like india is also seeing the kind of money that we never yes. like during the time when our parents grew up you did ration out everything like a 20 rupees made a difference you know i remember mm. like when we would take we would always use public transport we would always use a bus and the few times you would use that auto for the last mile you would see when that meter changes from like 16 rupees to 16.5 you get down from the auto because you yeah. don't want to you know like end up taking the auto for that extra mile so yeah. um i'm not saying one should um i think you should everything should be in measure like if you ask me the ideal way to live life because you could have everything and it's not enough and you could have mm. very little and it could always seem enough i've always believed that i had a lot Yeah. I've always believed that even as a kid I would be like my house is the most beautiful the dresses that my mother stitched me are the most beautiful the food that she put on my table is the best kind of food and I think it's the attitude like I feel if you grow from a mindset where I was a very happy kid like I had a beautiful childhood but I'm amazed to see that you don't you didn't uh, get influenced um I, I i mean i don't know i mean i'm i'm guessing because i got influenced <laughs> okay. i had this mindset that i lonely because i lived with my relatives yeah. so you're always very conscious with your living with yeah. the, when you're living with your relatives that you'll you try your best to minimize your expenses that you're living yeah. with someone so they they are already spending on your studies and transport so you shouldn't buy clothes yeah. so i would wear my uh, yeah. cousin's clothes yeah uh, when i'm at home obviously yeah. uh so and then i got married and my sister in law she's she's into skin care because like you enjoy food yeah. she enjoys skin care and she likes taking care of her feet hands yeah. and she yeah. likes doing that so she buys these things yeah. and i started feeling that i don't do anything for myself, myself and that yeah. was the phase yeah. when kabir was yeah. small and i was i started feeling that i don't have my life mm-hmm. it's everything is kabir i don't have career i don't have my own routine don't have friends so i started buying these things mm. and then i realized that uh, it got hectic for me hmm. because i don't have time yeah. and i want to be focused on my career and i have over complicated things for me yeah what if i have a min- very minimal routine for myself yeah. that i'll only work for 4 5 hours yeah and i'll rest of the time i'll spend with kabir i i shouldn't be spending time with friends because uh whenever i meet friends and they are not in my shoes yeah. so i feel like there is this negative uh, thing i get uh, take with me when i get home yeah. so i'm like i shouldn't i should risk i'll call them when i need them or they can call me when i when they need me but i limited those things yeah and yeah. Uh, there was no skin care routine for me yeah and uh, i started cleaning my washroom yeah. but i should get back to those three four product kind of uh, yeah. routine for myself and I think I'm so much more focused now. Yeah. I I don't go to malls now. Yeah. Because I don't enjoy yeah, because yeah. Kabir is crying when I'm in malls. Yeah. So I would um, you know rather visit Indra Nagar. Yeah. We have open shops and if I need yeah. something I'll go to this shop I'll buy something or I'll buy something for Kabir and we are home. Yeah. So I think Yeah. So I've, I think I've gone one step further so my wardrobe has pajamas like I just have black pajamas and I have black tops. and i just have a lot of those and the only two three things that i have are a couple of jackets so i would just literally have a couple of kurtas and jackets i don't like to think about <laughs> it and i have like these indian artisan shoes like the mo- the the like they make these really comfortable yeah, yeah. shoes i i'll have three or four of those and i don't like to think about it at all i i don't want to spend my time kind of like optimizing on mm-hmm. how i look every day it's yeah. it's irrelevant i feel like everybody looks nice and i yeah. for me like I, i i i function very differently but but to to the point about friends right i'm definitely the kind of person who doesn't like to lose any relationship like my friends date back to when i was studying in i've never lost a friend like through the years whether it's cluny like the school i went to or national public school or the colleges i went to or you know the places i worked i um it would really break my heart like i'm definitely the kind of person hmm. who likes to keep i value my relationships yeah. a lot and i definitely think i'm the one who puts a lot more effort keeping it together um so How i would much rather it? spend time yeah on those things uh, on my interactions with people uh, rather than like all of like i feel like beyond maybe it's the age also i don't know like maybe i'm maybe it's also the time where you it really doesn't matter like maybe it just it's amazing like 
how do you do it like you ran a company and are still running it you have a four year old kid yeah. and you you know want to stay in touch with all our Your I keep friends. everything else around my life very simple. It's the yeah. same meals Achha. every day. The way you, you know, the way you have kept your yeah. uh, routine very minimal. It's it's very useful. The same philosophy because for you everything. don't like your. There's no mind. Like I eat the same three meals every day. I eat. I dress the same. Like I have like a couple of things, and I'll wear exactly that. I have my clothes to work out, and I have like the clothes that I wear outside. It's properly so it's arranged. It's like, um. The, the you should have very limited number of decisions to make mm-hmm. so that you can focus on the most important decisions yeah. in your life yeah. so it like sucks your energy when you have to pick ye pen hai yeah. ye pen hai ye karna hai ye karna yeah. hai and i also feel the act i mean i i have a big problem with actually the beauty industry in general i feel like the notion of beauty is just so warped uh who is to decide right like yeah. why does clear skin so important why yeah. is white skin so important why is red lips so important yeah. i find um i find like i i actually think the beauty industry has destroyed our intellect like mm. i feel like every like fat lips who's to say that fat or thin lips look better who's yeah. to say like why are and, and and it's all marketing dollars driven towards conforming beauty to certain notions and i i don't find that acceptable i feel like 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 when you I mean I feel like all everybody is beautiful like what is the problem like people as long as you're a functioning individual the only thing you should optimize for is health yeah. of course people should be healthy like and of course to the extent that your external you know like suppose you have like a rash you need to investigate it because there could be an underlying health condition but beyond that as long as you're a functioning individual who's healthy why does it matter every i mean i i for me it's like it's not so obvious to me that hmm. a certain kind of beauty is better than a certain like i would see people quite equally like and i f- end up finding a lot of people just interesting people are unique hmm. i don't like this concept of beauty like it, it really bothers me and i feel like at some point no, it I, is truly concerning because i have also noticed this after i had kabir uh, that women has women have to make lot of decisions in their daily life Hmm. Like the the moment we are uh, awake, I have to dress up Kabir. Obviously, Siddharth is with me, but Kabir is small, so he's more dependent on me. Yeah. Siddharth is happy to help, but he's like, "मुझे मम्मा के गोदे में जाना है, मम्मा के साथ ही सोना है, मम्मा से ही पजामा पहना है." There are things. Yeah. So uh, I want that I have to make very less number of decisions. I have I should be making. Yeah. So this is concerning. कि जितने ज़्यादा ब्यूटी प्रोडक्ट्स हैं जितने ज़्यादा सिरम्स हैं जितने ज़्यादा हेयर मास्क अलग है और फेस मास्क अलग है एंड देर आर सो मेनी प्रोडक्ट्स एंड ऑल ऑफ दीज प्रोडक्ट्स आर फॉर वुमेन मोस्टली ठीक है एंड वी आर वी शुड वी शुड बी ट्राइंग दैट वुमेन दे हैव टू मेक लेस डिसीजन इन देयर लाइफ सो दे कैन फोकस ऑन देयर करियर एंड द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग्स एंड देन दे आर लाइक हमने एक थोड़ा सा उसको ग्लोरीफाई uh, कर दिया है कि इट्स देयर लाइफ दे शुड चूज बट अगर आप फंडामेंटली yeah. देखो तो जितना मिनिमल oh. होगा आप उतना बेटर डिसीजन करोगे तो अगर आप इन सब चीज़ों में स्टक हो दैट अ मैन ही कैन ड्रेस अप इन अ वेरी सटल वे एंड ही इज फीलिंग सो कॉन्फिडेंट और वो मीटिंग yeah. करने जा रहा है एंड यू आर स्पेंडिंग वन आर ड्रेसिंग अप वी हैव ओवर कॉम्प्लिकेटेड दिस I agree. Like, and I, you know, and it's small things, right? Like, and I read to my kid every day. Like, I read stories to yeah. her. I read one fairy tale after the other, and all the fairy tales end the exact same way. There is a beautiful princess. There is a notion of beauty, and then she ends up with a handsome prince, and they end up happily ever after. How many instances in life are going to end <laughs> up that way? Like, I'm a perfectly. It's shocking that we give our children the impression that solving for beauty is going to solve problems in life. Um I think the way we story tell is wrong. Yeah. I think the notion of this concept that um you know people are beautiful and some people are not is extremely damaging. And b- beautiful people will feel happy. Yeah. I mean yeah. Yeah and you know um once you have glossy skin you'll feel yeah. better and about you- yourself. which is not the case and so i so i i i understand when you have acne you should get the treatment then yeah. but when the skin is 
I don't have any acne, but my skin is not glowing. Then it's okay. It's not in my genes, or I my mother is not uh, my mother doesn't have that kind of skin, so it's okay. I understand. Yeah. Uh, so I'm constantly putting efforts to you know yeah. make my skin look more glossy. Yeah, and there'll be instances instances in your life, and I'll and I'll be. I've never talked about this before, but I'll tell you right. Um, there was an instance in my life where um, I I think I had. Um, gluten intolerance so i basically couldn't eat gluten right and every time i would eat gluten i would get like boils all across my face like there was not a place on my face where there was a boil like there was boils everywhere like i would yeah. walk on the road people would you know like indians yeah, are yeah. friendly they they act they ask because they care yeah. i appreciate it but it can be extremely difficult for somebody when yeah. every second person when you're walking on the road is tapping you and asking you is there something yeah. wrong is there something wrong my daughter had this and you should do the same thing you should put turmeric or whatever understand people are telling you because they feel bad for you right but you know what gives you like it's a very difficult position to be in because most people are really pitying you like people are feeling bad for you but it's not a situation to really feel bad about you have a couple yeah. of boils in your face it's fine yeah uh, and if you don't inherently as children grow up with that you know it's okay yeah a situation like that can really bring you down like because you go through life like i remember i was in an um going in a flight and the guy refused to sit next to me he said do you have anything that's transferable and i'm just like you know i mean it's a couple of boils on your face i are you finding it difficult to look at my face then the problem is with you it's not with me if we have reached imagine. a place in yeah. a society where somebody feels like they shouldn't sit next to me because they're having difficulty looking yeah. at my face who's the problem with the problem is with you but i was in a place and because of the yeah. way i've always thought about things to turn around and tell him that if you are finding it difficult to look at me you should change your seat i'm mm -hmm. not going to go anywhere uh, and the problem is really with the way you are looking at things and the problem's not with me um and i wish that every like there will always be situations in your life where you will need to the only person you can you need to feel good about yourself irrespective of how mm -hmm. you are externally and and that's what we should teach our girls like you know and 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 i feel like with the beauty industry i feel we are doing the exact opposite it's getting competitive people are comparing people have a notion and it's not it's not useful it's just yeah. it's not it's not useful for the way we look at yes. life i think i'll tell you what's making it worse uh if you have acne you'll search hmm. what to do for acne then your whole instagram feed facebook feed it. it fills up with messages or uh, fills up with post or influencers yeah. telling what to do for acne then you start seeing it as a very like bahut badi problem hai ye meri life ki because yeah. jitne baki log social media pe unko bhi yahi ho raha hai aur baki logon ne kaise usko theek kar liya hai yeah. to abhi aap career mein sab bhul gaye ho abhi aap apne jin ke sath aapko time spend karna hai jo cheez aapko actually mein khushi deti hai that you want to yeah. read you want to go out for walk or you should be doing yoga or exercise yeah. you forget about those things yeah. you only care about the girl who is telling you she had acne yeah how she got better and, skin and you are you are the person with the same heart and the same brain yeah whether or not you have acne yeah you have the same emotions yeah and you have the same head yeah does it really matter that it should occupy you should you should do what is needed from a health reason you know whatever needs to be done like but it was a good process but center your life ka. yeah yeah it should not be like it should not engulf you right yeah. like i mean so so yeah i i do like um, have strong uh, views no, on the way we we things and i can imagine um this happened to me 10 years back where india was not so beauty conscious so hmm. it was still okay like imagine if my uh, if i had this if i had something similar today or my daughter had it and she had to face it i i i do hope she had the same courage to turn around and say the problem is with your eyes it's not with my face she loves yeah i hope so I, ho i really really <laughs> i really hope so yeah no it, it i think we we have started learning from social media it has its own yeah. you know advantages and disadvantages we have this podcast available online anyone can watch yeah. it and anyone can produce a podcast anyone can write a post so it has its own advantages and yeah. disadvantages i remember um, one year back uh, kabir had started developing a squint in one of his eyes yeah and it made me so conscious and i'll tell you what i should have done I should have gone to a doctor and uh, उससे बात करके I should have figured it out that his diet should be uh, protein rich 
एंड स्क्रीन टाइम वी हैव टू लिमिट बट ऑल आई वॉज थिंकिंग ही गोज टू स्कूल एंड वॉट इफ एवरी वन लव सेट हिम और मेक्स हिम फील बैड सो आई वॉज थिंकिंग अबाउट दैट एंड देन आई वॉज लाइक वाई एम आई थिंकिंग अबाउट फ्यूचर वॉट इफ हिज डाइट इज गुड एंड आई शुड बी डूइंग थिंग्स दैट अंडर माई कंट्रोल एंड वॉट इफ कबीर इट डजेंट मैटर टू कबीर yeah na i mean like when i uh, he has a right to be accepted yeah. the way he is like yeah. why should he have to it's his process no yeah. like they will be kids i mean i i always tell my kid like i don't like you cannot see people differently however they are you have to accept them it's fine mm-hmm. everyone has their own good plus minuses we are all in the end of the day, at the end of the day every life is equal like yeah. and that you have to always remember like yeah. and you mentioned in one of your interviews that uh, there is uh, one investor i think he's from elevation uh, and you really like the fact about him yeah, that really like uh, he treats everyone equally, equally. Yeah. so there comes this point yeah. that uh, my dad was a bit like that like yeah. i would say that you know when we were growing up my house used to be a kind of like a open door yeah. and uh, you know like people like government employees and stuff if they had any problem with their land they would come they would sit with my dad try to understand and they would all like everyone was treated exactly the same way my dad would help everybody everyone's allowed to come and ask him for help and um, how much ever he can help he would help everybody so mm-hmm. like i remember helping somebody i mean and you know it's a big thing to own your own house for you know a certain section of society and um, my dad would do it freely and nobody gets like it comes from there i i, yeah. I do think that yeah tr- seeing people equally is a, is is as a is a is a good way to be happy yeah it's a good way to no, be happy i think um, we all should learn that uh, we should treat everyone equally and um, looks sense of difference association nahi hona chahiye yeah of course someone of is course. looking different doesn't mean that he or she deserves a different kind of treatment absolutely yeah? absolutely uh, so asni you mentioned in one of your interviews um, i think it was after the exit uh, that um, when you started yoga bar uh, india mein healthy nahi bikhta hai tasty bikhta hai mm-hmm. and do you think it has changed it's interesting you asked that question um i do going by the size of the health food industry um and comparing it to the chocolates industry or the chips industry yeah. or the haldi rams etc it's still very small it's growing fast yeah. it's growing quickly um but abhi bhi health taste ke bina nahi bikega like that is the truth of it you have to do 80% health and 20% taste taste um so yeah i mean uh, but you can make products much much better like for instance people think kellogg's chocos is healthy but at the end of the day it's full of maida so how can you like when we did our chocos we did mm-hmm. 70% extrusion with millets and dal so we took dal basically the dal that people eat we took all the millets and we did instead of 70% maida let's put 70% whole grains and dal and make choco but you can't remove the chocolate hmm. because then the kids will not touch it yeah. so um, and the educated parents like people who look at the nutrition label etc have come yeah. to that balance like you can't be 100% health your kids are not going to adapt uh, but somewhere that answer is between health and taste so you can't say 100% health i would say 80 70 80% health 20 30% taste and um, what are the products or ingredients we indians consume um, that are not healthy yeah. but uh, we don't care about it like if you i know the primary one is um, definitely the samosas and the vada pav so i inherently believe that gluten is a bad ingredient like maida is just lots of carbs and it also spikes sugar and indians eat a lot of maida hmm. because every covering right like whether you eat bread you should choose the wheat bread now britannia also has a millet plus wheat bread so you should always choose the healthier option on the aisle and that's quite beneficial i believe indians choose a lot like vada pav and samosa is, is quite harmful like hmm. talking about 650 calories of just empty carbs right so with zero protein yeah And But the really have... healthy food that Indians eat is we yeah. eat a lot of dal. So dal is great, milk is great, sattu is great, 
um vegetables we indians eat you, sh- you need to cook it a little bit lesser mm-hmm. um eating it a little bit more boiled and less cooked is quite useful um i'm not a i'm not a non vegetarian so i don't know so much about non veg food mm-hmm. at all uh but yeah the milk consumption in india is quite high also the good part is the farms in india are not as um you know it's not as industrial you know amul which still controls a very large part of the you know yeah. milk produced in the country still works with people the village person has their own cow they go supply to the amul cooperative and so yeah. getting that as naturally as possible is is super useful so the quality yeah. of milk and dairy produces a lot better in this country so it's like we don't have alternatives like we don't have anything uh eat a yoga bar taste is but you only mentioned in uh, in in one conversation that yoga bar is yoga bar chocolate is chocolate for so pe- people like, get to one, choose between because they are two different products but if you're eating something every day yeah you the, the the indulgence when you're eating chocolate that one meal of the week eating chocolate is different yeah. if you're snacking every day you you ha- you can't be eating chocolate every day you yeah. have to pick a yoga bar five days of the yeah. week and pick that chocolate one day of the week that's fine because that means at least for f- four days of the week you've got whole grains so what do we make yoga bars from we make it from yeah. whole grains nuts and seeds those are our primary ingredients and we add some cocoa and cocoa butter that's it we just mix all of that and okay. that's the product right now you can't be eating chocolates every day because mm-hmm. diabetes is a real problem in india like sugar is like in fact today the, i mean if you're asking me where health is showing up we have a no sugar muesli so zero sugar no no raisins no dates no nothing zero it total says, sugar it says zero total sugar right and that's the fastest selling product in reliance and dmart wow i mean about reliance and dmart we're not talking about i'm choosing reliance and dmart yeah. to talk about because i'm saying the shopper who comes to reliance and dmart also understands um health today hmm. it's not only the affluent people who are hmm. shopping online so what are the f- four or five things urban population should be having in a, in a day where they oh, can't cook at home and there are things they can opt for like, okay. and you should by replacing few of the things yeah so i would say lots of fruits you start your breakfast with fruits so even if you are eating like 40 grams of muesli put one plate of fruit Hmm. Okay, one plate of fruit, some muesli or whatever, rather than you know having a lot of rice and all that in the morning, puri, all of that. No, no oil fried stuff. Yeah. Some muesli or some corn flakes or whatever, and lots of fruits. Uh, I would say lunch should be like you have to have. Like I'm a big fan of eating a lot of broccoli. I eat like broccoli all the time, so I eat like one floret of broccoli a day. So I would say instead of choosing the maida pasta, choose a whole grain pasta. choose the non maida one so whatever you eat in the afternoon whether it's kichdi have vegetables with it if you're having roti have vegetables with it so finish your two or five and your lunch two of the five portion vegetables and fruits that you needed eat in a day you finish that during lunch then you have i'm a big believer in drinking a lot of milk so i don't do the vegan way like i would say you have to get protein as a vegetarian so have protein have some way in your proteins so that you get that 20 30 grams of protein I also beyond six o'clock one should not eat. You have to give your stomach that rest. So for your dinner, keep it light. Um, you know, either have um, again repeat some vegetables and so roti or something. So you don't have to overcomplicate it. Don't overcomplicate yeah. it. And once you create a habit, that habit is easy to maintain. Yeah. And snacking is a big one. The place where people go wrong is mid evening snacking and night snacking. Hmm. If you sleep early, that night midnight snacking goes out of the window. If you make a habit to sleep at nine thirty, yeah, finish your last meal by six o'clock, and um, if you're snacking in between your lunch and dinner, pick a healthy snack. Yeah, I think that's the problem. I'm talking about uh, everyone, most of the people who are not health conscious, or even if they are, they can't afford. So if they are, they get bujia or uh, you know. Uh, some kind of chips to snack, yeah. or they have to buy something that's not affordable. They'll pick bhujia and namkin, and that is something that will spoil the entire yeah. other uh, routine they have for themselves. Yeah, yeah. I think there are. Um, I don't think like. I think avoid the cover. Yeah. You know, like I was telling you that so- sometimes barriers present opportunities. Yeah. If I was not gluten intolerant. Yeah. I would never have discovered that there are so many snacking that so much of snacking that you can do if you leave maida out it's a big thing. Yeah. Like if there was a one tip just don't pick the stuff that has maida at the yeah. at the label. Like just don't pick maida stuff. 
so as can you uh, you know list out four or five things indians are doing uh, wrong like one of the things i can recall having biscuits with tea like avoid biscuits first like, of all yeah. completely avoid biscuits because biscuits are just maida hydrogenated fat and sugar there's no nutrition there i would say indians are deficient in protein you have to make up your protein during a day um obviously if you're vegetarian you can't eat eggs but you have to make up your protein with either tofu paneer so be conscious about your protein intake avoid biscuits avoid the samosa and vada pav and um try to do like only one cheat meal a week so you don't feel deprived you don't feel like you're not getting to eat anything like restrict that and eat by 6 o'clock like keep like a hard stop and say that beyond 6 or 7 by 6 to 7 finish it from 7 to the next morning don't eat hmm. because the body needs to reset like you need that rest so like um, 40% of millennials they skip their big breakfast why is that happening like because they wake up late the reason like if you're waking up at 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock in the morning you're going to get hungry by 9 on yeah. but if you wake up at 10 in the morning you don't find the need to make breakfast right you just have lunch and it's, it's very interrelated right like your sleep habits your influence your food habits your workout influences your protein yeah. so the way you live your life influences a lot of what you end up doing the choices that you end up making and um, is there a different uh, set of suggestions for women because women need different yeah. kind of uh... so i would say for women uh, calcium and protein are really important because you need to keep your bones strong i also feel like indian women don't find the need to work out the way people abroad do so i would say incorporating that workout you know because you're all day you're just thinking about your family but yeah. you need to think about yourself and you can do much more for your family if you are at the peak of your health so do that walk do that walk for one hour in case you're not going find that yoga class it's a very social the reason to go and work out with other people is also you make a couple of friends there then it becomes doesn't feel like a chore it feels like you're going there to yeah you know and i think a lot of women don't get to experience that kind of time yeah so whenever i um, you know do yoga i feel very happy it's not because i have like back pain issues so i'm doing yoga and i won't have pain it's like during that one hour i think that i'm doing Stand something for, for myself, myself yeah. and i'm getting think about ek 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 thera wo ek ghante ke liye aa gaya hai ki pure din mein aaj kya hua kya nahi karna chahiye tha kya karna chahiye it's like the reason why i prefer yoga over gym because gym mein aapko sochne ka time thoda kam milta hai music bhi chal raha hai aur intense hota hai thoda yoga people i've realized also love music right it's a good one what to actually like dance or to like it's just nice it's just you know it's at one hour you get to do whatever you like doing so you should choose the workout that makes it feel like it's not a workout yeah. hmm. so if for indian women i would say more calcium and protein and more like one hour every day for yourself to work out yeah. in the way in which it doesn't feel like a workout hmm. makes sense and uh, so asni we also uh, like i see these low fat uh, products or low sugar or zero sugar want to know more about those products like whenever we have tea so there is this third thing apart from brown sugar and white sugar uh, zero sugar um, you know sweetener yeah what what's that like what are these kind of products so um you have to see the source so if the no sugar product is chemical avoid it if the no sugar product is stevia and stevia comes from plants it's okay but there's still research going around in terms of you know whether stevia has any long term implications on health So if you ask me some sugar a day is fine like if you're only having sugar in your tea in the morning and evening it's okay you have to measure but if you're putting that like eating chocolate yeah. restrict your indulgences to once a week then you don't have to think so much about everything if you enjoy you know in india that cup of tea is cultural it's the way the family sits together and reads their newspaper yeah. or comes together for breakfast i would say don't make changes on the things that make you feel like you're at home or you're like Hmm. the social things don't change too much yeah. change the ones that are change the habits that are stress induced hmm. you pa- you put that chocolate in because you feel like suddenly your problems will go away yeah. don't do that hmm. restrict so your don't... indulgences to once a week then it doesn't matter this 
you don't have to worry about low calorie no sugar you avoid yeah. biscuits you avoid chocolate you do one cheat meal a week you sleep on time you eat between 6 to 7 o'clock you won't become a model but you'll yeah you'll be, be okay. healthy you'll be you'll be okay <laughs> i have never like some people tell me like you're not skinny enough I've never visited a hospital or I've never gone to a yeah, doctor in 20 right. years right like I've yeah. never I've never seen a doctor I've never I've never taken a medicine in my life I probably took the last medicine I took was something my mother gave me when I was 5 years old I've never taken the last I took was the covid vaccine I've never yes. taken a medicine in my life I was able to have a child quite late in my life the, the I mean I got married late I got married when I was 35 I had a child quite easily I oh, think those are the indicators when... of I was 36. Okay. Um I think the indicators of health have to be changed. Like people and it assume was, it was okay for you the delivery like the day before uh, elevation put money in the company Manipal hospital is opposite we signed the term sheet I went to the hospital that night and we were doing the diligence literally day after the day after that. I have never struggled to not do anything and my and during my pregnancy most people didn't even know i was pregnant because i was just this i was fine so i was just amazing yeah and, and a lot of people come back and tell me you run a health food company you're not skinny i'm like i have never taken a pill in my life so to me that's the that's a better indicator of health i can lift 50 kgs i can do push ups like 30 push ups i won't break a sweat like i'm really strong like even my gym instructor who comes to train me um will say it like i'm very very strong like i'm a, like i'm mentally strong i'm physically strong why do i need to look like a size 0 i, I don't I, need to look I like a size 0 i think i can connect the dots now like your focus you're so driven you have minimal lifestyle i focus on the important things and my relationships are very still, important like my yeah. i'm i'm very socially like i love like i'll talk to everybody every flight i've taken in my life i have made two friends we might not keep you in touch you don't sit with entrepreneurs <laughs> i mean i feel i need honest conversation like if somebody maybe after this podcast i get to sit with you <laughs> no, no, of course uh, i also have, i mean i have a very large social circle yeah. uh, but also i mean my closer friends are people who have known me from the time i was like 14 15 years and some even earlier than that but this is so amazing but i would say like in life you should always keep your life really simple like I feel we complicate our lives too much. It's quite simple actually. It's you only need food, shelter, clothing and you need to take care of the the house you live in is your body. So you have mm-hmm. to make sure that you do what is good for your body. Like but not over stress, right? Like and you should you can't impress everybody all the time and it's yeah. okay like it's it's fine. So minimalism is the key. You can you can do everything but if you do it in like in the right uh, Yeah. I feel like not like you can over- socialize also, you yeah. can build a company, you can deliver yeah. uh a baby like I even mean, that, in your but that is just genetic like I can't take credit for, like but maybe I'm, it has something it it yeah, I maybe, I think maybe, I can say yeah but I like I have never like I won't waste money on a coke like I've never drunk coke in my life. I'm okay. Yeah. I don't buy ice creams. I don't I've never like biscuits and mm-hmm. stuff the last I ate was 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. um so and it's fine and, and i think like uh you know like some people say like yeah for all the health things that you tell me you don't look i'm like your notion of what looks healthy is very different from my notion yeah. of what is health my notion of health is if i run a race today with a 20 year old and i'm in the gym with a 20 year old can yeah. i lift weights like her mm-hmm. can i run on the treadmill faster than her so my benchmark i'm okay to have like a little bit of flab it's a natural yeah. process of aging i don't want to do anything about it yeah. but can i constantly um you know challenge myself for you know in terms of performing or like in terms of like health parameters that are important valuable to our life yeah. not some external uh, you know gratification for me th- that is more important like um, yeah and i think i made the right choice i think some of these things i might have made mistakes along the way but i think it's fine miss if if you end up with a life where you feel that you've been mostly been happy yeah. i think you've done a few right things I'm saying if you mostly have been satisfied, grateful, happy, then it's fine. You've made choices that have worked for your life. If you feel like you've spent a life where you've constantly feel upset, you constantly feel like you've compared, you've constantly feel like you've let yourself down, then it's time to relook and say what are the choices that I could do differently. Hmm. So, Asne, tell me about the time when you were um, you had a baby and company was still at a. Those were actually very beautiful time in my life. I would definitely. 
say that the best thing to happen to me was uh, with the timing perfect perfect because uh, and and, and I'm, i mean aria was born in 2019 and covid struck in 2020 now i'm very sad that covid yeah. happened i think a lot of people went through a lot of difficulty yeah. but for me personally it also meant that i got to spend more time mm-hmm. with her and um, i i really enjoyed time like i'm very like even when she was six months i would read a lot to her or i would sing to her or i had routines like for me my like i would make these small routines yeah uh, i didn't find and my investors were very nice about the whole thing like i feel um, it was easy for them to understand because all of them are parents themselves mm-hmm. uh, most of them have daughters to be honest yeah kanan has two daughters deepak has one daughter one son yeah mm-hmm. i feel like people understand that they six still a lot to do yeah but and you do it you do yeah. it but there's a strong message we are sending through this podcast that the right set of choices with the right kind of routine with the minimal needs, routine yeah. or needs yeah you can you can you can have a have it you can have a lot yeah i don't not know if all you can have yes, everything yes, yes. you may you may not be yeah. you may not ever be able to have everything yeah. but you can have enough at least that point in time yeah. the things that matter the most you don't have to compromise with any of those things at least yeah Yeah. yeah yeah very nice yeah i think I, i have a lot to learn from you i i mean i i mean i yeah. i'm just saying it as it is i don't no, know I different people derive happiness from different things yeah. i know people who are extremely spirited unless they do like that best company and for them the company matters more than their family and all of that i'm not that person and i'm i'm okay to make that choice i would much rather as my as my inherent um ability to balance a lot of things i'm okay to have a little of a lot of things and not mm. the maximum of any one thing mm. i do believe people who have a more balanced life tend to be happier and i would much rather optimize for being the happiest person on the planet than optimize for being a lot of the other things yeah. like and that would be my life's goal like how i will never know if i'm the happiest person in the world it's impossible to measure yes. and therefore it's a good thing to aspire because if you're constantly aspiring as to how to be happier every day you that's the best thing you can actually do for yourself neither can it be measured neither will yeah. you ever be unhappy uh, and you'll always make the choices that inherently optimize that and there's no better purpose in life your yes. your purpose of existence should be that you feel better every yes. day yeah makes sense and so hasni uh, yoga bar is now part of itc yeah. right um uh what's that one thing you have learned from itc like institution yeah. like itc um So I've learned a lot of things but I would say the thing that I was most impressed with is um their work ethic. I think ITC at least everyone I have seen and met I do believe for them work is worship like I do believe they treat work as really important and they find that motivation to really deliver excellence. Um that's something that that even I'm learning from like um you know how do you push yourself like as an entrepreneur it comes naturally it's your company whatever right and of course even an itc shareholders and employ i mean employees are also shareholders etc so in a sense that it is a shareholder run company mm-hmm. but to push yourself towards excellence every day um and senior management like i remember there was one time when we had our board meeting on saturday and um mr malik was you know he heads the food division and he said if there's a spillover I'm okay to come on Sunday because I understand you guys are traveling on Monday. Like such a senior person. Yeah. Um first of all having the humility to tell us that I'll work around your time schedule um and to offer to come on a Sunday is 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 because I'm sure their job is a lot more stressful than mine because now that I have ITC looking after mm-hmm. a lot of the distribution etc my jobs become a lot easier in their system. So mm-hmm. I think learning that high quality work ethic is something that i get to witness first hand and uh, you are now part of itc and uh, we see all these new age brands yoga bar is one of them and we have different style of working marketing strategies are different how are these institutions are different than these new age brands like so apart from scale what's what's different um i think institutions are much more long term thinking because i think when you end up doing a startup and i'm going by my classical mistakes yeah. right you can't chase revenue all the time you have to go deep in a category 
The reason ITC eventually bought Yogabad is not because the revenue was X or Y. They bought it because we had serious market share in bars and we had serious market share in Muesli. And most of our product extensions, they could see it as taking market share. Um, new age companies try to do multiple brands, hmm. multiple products. And it. I feel like it's difficult to manage offline when you have when you don't have depth in a category. You mm-hmm. can't influence margins, you can't influence price, you can't influence um, you know, trade to get really attracted unless you have serious market share. Yeah. And I think the fundamental difference between an institution and the way startups work is you keep optimizing for revenue irrespective of quality of that revenue. It's a mistake that, you know, we also went into line extensions. We tried to like launch entire Ayurvedic set of products and it really bombed, right? Yeah. But, but what really is valuable is going deep in a category, owning mm-hmm. as much market share as possible. That's what. But you were also focused on, uh, you know, building bars, like making bars only for initial six years, yeah. right? So which was a good decision. Yeah. Because that meant that that you know we never used to spend on marketing and all yeah. that that much. We never had whatever inside Amazon, Flipkart, whatever ads we used to run, right? Yeah. But because we were so focused on like, the minute we launched Muesli, yeah. It was so easy for people to trust the brand because they knew that the... It's coming from Yoga Bar, so Yoga we can Bar. trust it. Yeah, we can trust it. And I think that was actually, in retrospect, a very good thing that we did. Yeah. Because if we tried to extend across 10 different categories, we might not have been ever able to kind of convince a strategic investor why they should buy 2-2% two, two in 100 different categories. Mm-hmm. Better to buy 30%. And in... Because then mm-hmm. as the market size grows and it's categories that you want to bet on, you would be okay to acquire a company and do that. Yeah. And I think uh, this is one of the reasons why ITC took a bet. Yeah. Like yeah. you were, it is you a were, primary reason. It was always like long term thinking, yeah. building distribution for one thing and then going on yeah. for the next thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and also the fact of doing omni channel, right? Like yeah. we were available and we were able to sell and collect cash offline. Yeah. Billing, not just billing. You can show sales, yeah. but you have to collect that cash. It means trade actually believes that your product sells. Yeah. So amazing. And uh, you also mentioned that uh, people would ask for yoga bar, not. Yeah, yeah. Even if they were buying a competitor product, it became like a noun. Yeah. And um, we have these uh, brands. um, One of the products is paid safa. And uh, its founder said that um, if a customer goes to the shop and he asks for paid safa, and uh, paid safa available, and shopkeeper suggests. Um, some other alternatives yeah. and uh, he takes that so he's like branding to ho gaya but if this is the situation then you are working for your competitor yeah, not yeah. for yourself yeah, so you yeah. should also like distribution is very ke important kuch bhi yeah, yeah, hai. it's very important like do you want to comment on that so i mean the primary reason for doing the strategic deal was to make sure that we get distributed distribution. to all the relevant distribution is very difficult to build yeah. It's not easy to build offline distribution at all. Is it, it because of healthy health? Because no, it's, a, it's a very expensive process. You need 300 crores at the very minimum to kind of like build sensible distribution. Mm-hmm. And even then your relationships with this, you should remember that the ITCs and the Dabars of the world have relationship with their distributors spanning 100 years. 100 years. How are you going to substitute that? Hmm. So it was more like finding a home for Finding a home for a brand that will can, live. Yeah. Yeah, that will live. No, I, I'm sure I, you will feel amazing and I'll also feel because we have this conversation. I feel connected with you. So whenever we will see Yoga Bar in the next 30 years, 40 years, if, I, yeah. <laughs> if I'm there, of course it, you'll be it'll there, be an what? amazing feeling. Yeah, I mean, it, it will be nice. I mean, I, yeah. I, I do look forward to a yeah. point where, you know, like... Uh, I can tell Kabir and <laughs> his I friends. I knew, she's my friend. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah amazing. <laughs> And but a lot of heart and soul has gone into building the brand. A lot of heart definitely. and soul. Like we didn't do shortcuts. We didn't, like we really, like even today, the, and this is blind audit, right? Anyone goes to my home, opens the draw. Yeah. The only packaged food you'll find will either be the yoga bar oats or the chocos or, yeah. and I eat the yoga bar chocolate muesli. I call it my bowl of happiness. Like in the morning I get up, like, of course it's, measured 40 grams of muesli yeah. and a whole plate of strawberries and apple mango season's coming it's the reason like yeah. i'm just waiting for the mango season but um it's I'm, i mean we make food like the way we make for our family 
And uh, so, asking, what are the other brands you really admire? Like, I like Biotic. Can... I find that their products are quite honest. I like okay. for personal care. I definitely think that their products are quite good. Uh, I use their soaps and I use their toothpaste. Um, Any but, other company that has taken counterintuitive bet and like? Um, I mean, I, I find I'm, I'm I'm I like Vadam teas. I find mm-hmm. Vadam. tea is quite natural quite quite high quality tea and i love my tea so i think vadam's done a pretty good job with the product um and i think like forest essentials etc are quite good brands yes. like i do believe they look beautiful they deliver a certain version of india that that has a certain kind of aesthetic and my favorite um kind of um home decor brand is kind of good earth Mm-hmm. I feel they do get design. They do get aesthetic. So, if you can name five, six brands that have really changed the uh, habits of Indian consumers for good. Yeah. So, I, I think in clothing, I would say Zudio and Zara. I would definitely say their opening in India and expanding their stores. Zudio, of course, owned by the Tatas. Zara is also, I think, Tata's investment. Like, I think it's a JV. Yeah, it's a JV. So, I do think that opened up the clothing space fully. um h&m for kids clothes i would say um i would say in food food is is difficult i think it's owned by the fmcg companies hmm. and i think i might be biased but i think except us i don't think i mean <laughs> i th- i think we built a serious company in food um i think vadam's interesting from a tea perspective i think personal care i've always liked biotic i hmm. biotic mysur sandal medimix the companies that took really long to kind of build yeah. who they were yeah um what else in 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 um in um design and home stuff i think nikobar good earth i think they've over a period of 20 30 years built a very solid brand for themselves hmm um i have my friend uh, he's also building a healthy product uh, healthy food he's building in healthy food category and um uh, he had a very bad experience with vcs Uh, okay. with his first venture okay and he got multiple rejections yeah. and uh, then he uh, started something else and uh, he's so much focused on just cracking the distribution now yeah. he doesn't want to do any branding or marketing because he doesn't have the budget yeah. but at this because at the same time he doesn't want to raise from vcs yeah. it's like vcs they don't understand yeah. uh, your you know perspective and when you take money from them you are forced or you feel the pressure to do to things grow. in a way you don't want to pursue yeah. so he is taking government grants yeah. because in that case you will have less pressure yeah and you can sustain because without money you can't you yeah. know build the products yeah. so there are things he mentioned that uh, as you also mentioned in one of the interviews vc hallucinations yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. For food. For food. No, I'll be I'll be uh, let me actually rephrase that, right? Um the VC hallucination comment was for telling people to grow food through D2C through their website. Yeah. A 30 to 40% gross margin product cannot sustain through a website. You need a 70% gross margin product. Hmm. So just because everybody does D2C, personal care can do D2C. Hmm. Food cannot because your gross margins has to be north of 60%. Mm-hmm. because you have the logistics cost you have the marketing cost and then you have to generate a profit right mm-hmm. um to be fair to vcs without them it's not possible to accelerate your growth now if i had to do yoga bars over a 50 year journey somebody with my background i mean we had one house that my father got allotted through the government it is impossible for me to sustain and i don't have a family business yeah nobody in my historically has ever done business in my house without their support would it have been possible at all for me to do what i've done absolutely not i think the responsibility lies both sides mm. i think the valuations have to be accurate if you can like i remember that when we were raising there were a couple of companies that half our revenue and 2x our losses getting valued higher than us now it causes problems for both parties no strategic is going to give you that kind of value and by the vc doing that they've created made it expensive for everybody because suddenly this person has got so much money hmm. and they're just throwing it behind not building a sustainable business the yeah, responsibility lies in both the entrepreneur building properly um and the venture capitalist doing it at the right value doing it 
at you know the right amount of money like you don't just it's not an industry where you can just money is going to solve your problems yeah paisa de diya kal revenue hmm. aa jayega aur hmm. financials bhi theek ho jayega aisa kuch nahi hota aur ye arr sab kuch is just bakwas like yeah. people don't value you on your annual run rate yeah there is a buying cycle for the consumer for food like for juices it's april may june when it's summer yeah. you have to take annual i mean the yeah. full years last years revenue is where people value you i think you. this is one of this is the reason why partnering with the right uh, people yeah. makes all the difference yeah. the people like now i think all the entrepreneurs they don't raise money from anyone yeah they they yeah, but, yeah. they yeah. raise money uh, from people who can actually be supportive yeah and because they understand the space they understand the needs and yeah. how exactly they can add the value yeah Yeah. now like this is the new trend that uh, entrepreneurs especially second time entrepreneurs they prefer to take money from experts yeah. slash angels yeah. than institutions yeah i mean if you i mean you also have to price it right like yeah. i'm i mean i'm a very um, clever investor yeah. and a lot of entrepreneurs expect a certain valuation you have to be realistic like yeah. you have to leave money on the table to make money and i think that's the important thing to remember hmm. there is no such thing as a good deal Hmm. The deal happens when everyone gets an exit and all parties on the table have won. Hmm. There is no me winning, you yeah. losing your money. There is yeah. no you have to the mo- the best negotiations happen when everyone has walked away from that table hmm. feeling like yeah. they all got something. Yeah. yeah. That's important to remember. Something you felt after your uh, Yeah, yeah, of course. Right? Uh, and uh, you also mentioned uh, many times about your father and how men in your life contributed or <laughs> supported you yeah. to be more ambitious and uh, can you comment on that because it's very important uh, yeah. there are so many women and especially when they have to make the decision uh, to choose the right partner for for yeah. themselves right yeah. what kind of like suppose we have one um, very ambitious working woman yeah uh, and she has to make that decision for herself what are the qualities she yeah. shouldn't compromise with yeah see Abhi, so this is a very long topic um yeah. you know and and it's actually um involves looking at life a bit differently yeah that my father was who my father was was my luck yeah i was born to him i'm very fortunate yeah. i also don't want to take away from the uh things that my mother has done for me i i had very good parents yeah. i have very my mom's still alive and uh, obviously i'm very very fortunate right um i also think most men have to look at their daughters like the way my dad did if there's yeah. one lesson to be learned my father you know when the third daughter was born everybody was telling him i'm so sorry and my dad was like the third one's also like indira gandhi so you know to take that sense of seriousness and to take that sense of i, I mean i want my daughters to realize their potential and for a man we're talking about this 50 years ago takes takes a certain kind of human being yeah. and um, if more people are that broad minded it's better for society so the lesson for most men is that you should and i think india is getting there to be very honest i think today india is getting there to come to the second part like aditya obviously came in at a time where my business was negative revenue hmm. he helped me throughout the itc process he did the entire online sales when my offline sales tanked and it's a lot of sacrifice like it is not easy for someone to come and fix a business um and to also not um you know um and he's sensible enough to know that it's 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 what he's doing for my happiness right it's not um it's not when you are growing your own business you're willing to take all of those hardships mm. but to do it because it's the right thing for the family takes yeah. a person of a certain maturity right mm. um so to answer the question when i chose my life partner i only looked for three qualities i looked for somebody who was completely honest i don't want someone who ever you know you should be able to talk to each other you should be able to trust like trust is number 1 um i would say you should always look for that friendship like do you all when when all that madness settles and when all that everything settles are you all both able to truly tell each other how you all feel um you look for friendship and um you look the third very important quality is are you marrying a kind human being like is somebody able to look at somebody else's interest um you know um over their own yeah. uh, i'm not somebody who's actually extremely empathetic or kind but i work on it and i've become a better human being because i've seen my husband do it i didn't optimize for the degrees i didn't optimize for the money it wasn't even a criteria for me i don't care about all of that yeah. 
the only three criteria i cared about was honesty yeah kindness and friendship and i think if you make choices that are not influenced by pedigree or the fact that he was a very intelligent human being was a um icing on the cake it yeah. it helps that somebody like i can ask aditya something about einstein's life he would have read the documentary but i could also ask him about um mm, billy elliot and he will know you know like he will his i i would ask him about the political political situation right now in gaza and he would know hmm. um so the fact that he's an encyclopedia was is exciting <laughs> but um but in, inherently as a individual he's a very kind human being hmm. and that's what people should seek in a partner I mean, I'm not saying okay. marriages are easy like I, I I'm quick to add that yeah. irrespective of two very very good human beings being together sometimes yeah. you know they there are the ups and downs of marriage and you'll have to your value systems will hold you yeah. together but but at least when you're making that choice don't make frivolous choices like don't yeah. make the choice because somebody went to a good college or somebody has x amount of money I think that's not very useful yeah. when I say that you have to tune your choice you're not hiring for a job yeah you're not hiring for a you're hiring for i mean in a lot of ways you're hiring for a life partner and for a father of your children so you need to make the choice to marry a good human being yeah. that's the, that's the choice to make this makes so much sense because world has become flashy yeah and we shouldn't but we are kind of talking about most of the people we have started forgetting the roots yeah the, yeah. the things we should be focusing on yeah. the yeah. core yeah मैरिज क्यों वर्क करेगी पार्टनरशिप पार्टनरशिप क्यों वर्क करती है एंड कहीं ना कहीं वो पिक्चर परफेक्ट थोड़ा हमें इन्फ्लुएंस कर देता and it's the right attitude like what is the learning in each of these situations how do you take that back home and make it better the next time i think that's the there's no such thing as a yeah there's a, as a straight line i mean life will never be a straight line and you will never truly be able to understand what somebody else is going through because you haven't lived their life hmm. so what you see and what other people experience is very very different from yeah. what you see on yeah So you should be kind enough to understand you should always you mm. should always understand somebody else's point of we, view we have started reacting very quickly yeah so how do we um how do we be more kind yeah. that we take a moment to understand if we don't understand it's okay don't comment yeah. if you can if you can help yeah. then only you should yeah you know come up with some solution or or uh, yeah yeah and I'm sure many people are going to learn from this interview and uh, the best and the must thing they should be learning from you is how to make how to focus on the most important things and how do you do that like by making yeah simplifying like, your simplifying life simplifying your life yeah yeah, yeah. Thank you so much Swasni for being on the podcast. Thank you for having I me. I truly enjoyed yeah, it. No, thank you so much. My Saturday is well spent. Oh, I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> thank you so much for thank coming you. on the show. Thank you. Thank you.